This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and I want to talk to you about the manifestations of God, supernatural manifestations through the Messiah Jesus. Uh, I would prefer if you uh, viewed on uh, TonyKempMinistries.net um, the series of teachings that I did called Supernatural Foundations, because um, I believe that the supernatural needs a foundation. And then we did a series called Supernatural Prayers. And, um, you know, I want you to know how to get your prayers answered. And then we did a series called Supernatural Revelations. And so this is the fourth in that particular series, and it's called Supernatural Manifestations. And uh, in order for me to really share with you uh, the goodness and the grace of God, I first have to talk to you about Revelation because... Revelation is what produces manifestation. And so I want to begin with a scripture found in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 15 and downward. Where it's, or the Apostle Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love to all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. And so I'm going to make a series of statements that in reality, uh, each statement would be a message in and of itself. And hopefully when you hear these statements, you'll do your own research in the word of the Lord. And so here's the first statement that I want to make to you. And that is this. Revelation releases divine activity. One of the reasons the Apostle Paul prayed for you through the Holy Spirit is so that you would receive the spirit of revelation. And the reason why the Apostle Paul prayed this prayer is because when you receive the revelation of the word, it releases supernatural, heavenly, and holy activity in your life. And you need the acts of God in your life. You need uh, supernatural blessing. You need supernatural finances. And I don't often like to talk about uh, finances or uh supernatural prosperity, but I have to tell you that when you believe that the Lord is your provider, the Father releases angels of provision. And my personal conviction is that the Father gives assignments to angels. And Hebrew says that the angels of God are ministers to those of us who are heirs of salvation because of our faith and commitment and trust and relationship with Jesus the Messiah. And so I believe that there is a heavenly, holy minister of finance angel uh, who has angels underneath him that bring finances to you. Uh, in my own situation, I have had, uh, I've received supernatural finances. I remember just the other day, someone um, sent me a check for $1,000. Uh, during the same time period, someone else sent me a check for $1,200 to Tony Kemp Ministries, not for my own personal benefit. Because I believe that when you are doing the will of the Father, the Father finances the expansion of the kingdom of the Son, Jesus. And so I, I, I remember another check coming in for $1,400. And so what I spend time doing is I spend time praying the Word. And the Word says that the Lord is my provider. And I, this is not a selfish prayer because money is needed to advance the kingdom of heaven. Money is needed to advance the kingdom of our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so what I want to say to you is this. When you have the revelation of the word, uh, 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 um, Ephesians 4, I mean uh, Philippians 4, 
that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through the Messiah Jesus. Then when you pray that word, because you have a revelation that that is true, you cause heaven to land to earth and finances to find you. Amen. Because revelation releases divine activity. As you are doing the will of the Father, because you're a disciple and a follower of Jesus, know this, that your revelation in the word of the Lord actually increases your sphere of influence in the kingdom of God. If you are a servant of Jesus, if you're a handmaid of Jesus, <clears throat> if you're a minister of the gospel, I don't care whether you're licensed or ordained or not, you have a revelation of the Father's will, the Father's plan, the Father's purpose for your life, and you are doing the work, then that revelation will increase your metron, your sphere of influence. Because you see, um, revelation produces manifestation. And revelation, the measure of your revelation, becomes the measure of your faith. Uh, Romans 12, 3 says, God has given to each one a measure of faith. But the measure of your revelation determines the measure of your faith. And then the Word of God says in John's Gospel that the Father gave uh, Jesus the Spirit, but there was no measure to the Spirit that Jesus received, to the anointing that Jesus received, because uh, Jesus had access to all the revelation of the Father. And because he had access to all the revelation of the Father, he had access to the anointing and to the spirit of the Father. What does this mean? This means that your revelation determines your access to the anointing of the spirit. And the anointing of the spirit will determine, amen, your sphere of influence in the kingdom of God because you must be faithful to the revelation that you're given. You must be faithful to the commandments of God you must be faithful to the commission of Jesus. And as you are faithful, your metron, your sphere of influence that the Apostle Paul talks about, expands and increases so that you can reach others for the glory of God and to, to, to magnify Jesus. And so that the word of God is spreading throughout the earth. See, when you're thinking about measures, and we're talking about revelation. Uh, the Word of God talks about, in Ephesians 4, how God the Father has given apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, to build up and edify the body of Jesus Christ, until every single one of us comes to the measure, see that word measure again, the fullness of the height of the Messiah of Jesus. And so each one of us has a measure of maturity. And your measure of maturity is determined by the measure of your revelation. And because, so if you're going to move into maturity, it means that you must act on the revelation of the word in your life constantly, consistently, and faithfully. Because when you act upon the revelation of the word constantly, consistently, and faithfully, you increase the measure of your maturity. And so the way you have the manifestation of God in your life and ministry is by acting on revelation, because revelation produces manifestation. If I have learned anything at all from my uh, spiritual father, Dr. Reddy McLean, it is that you must recognize, think, speak, and walk in the revelation of God to produce the manifestations of God in your life, through your life, and in ministry to extend the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. So let's continue talking about revelation because revelation is the key to supernatural manifestation. I've said this before, but I will say it again. Revelation determines the manifestation of God in your life and ministry. And revelation is the jurisdiction of your faith. 
And so revelation determines your supernatural authority and your supernatural power. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Uh, not very long ago, I was in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, I was introduced to a man who had an incurable disease. Uh, the man's back was in pain. The man had a, a nerve problem all over his face. His face was in pain. He had been to the physician. His case was incurable. He had one leg shorter than the other. And um, this, uh, this mutual acquaintance and friend of ours introduced us to one another. And the reason this brother introduced me to uh, his friend is uh, because, you know, I, I do have a revelation of God that Jesus is the healer and the miracle worker. I mean, Isaiah 9 says, Jesus' name, the person of Jesus, he is wonderful and he works wonders. He's the mighty God, so he does miracles. And so what happens in this is I begin to pray for the man. God heals his back. God grows out his leg. God touches the nerves in his face. And all the pain that he had been in, literally, for at least two years, and he may have told me more, but I can't remember, so I'll say at least two years, instantly disappeared. And he began to relax. And, and he's happy because I shared with him the revelation that Jesus is a healer and a miracle worker. And Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when I shared that revelation that was real in my heart and real in my life, it released divine activity. It began to increase the kingdom of God into this man's life in the area of health and healing. This revelation produced a manifestation of God in this man's body. And the, the, the revelation activated his faith so that he could receive what Jesus purchased by his holy blood. And the revelation of the word released an authority over sickness and disease. It disappeared from his body and the power of healing was released and he was instantly, instantly made well by Jesus. You see, the reason you want to uh, get in the word, because the Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, <clears throat> he said, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And um, the prophet Isaiah said in the word of the Lord, he said, Seek ye out the book of the word of the Lord and read. And the apostle Paul told his spiritual son Timothy, Give yourself to the reading of the scriptures. And uh, Jesus said in John's gospel, he said, Search the scriptures. In the original language it means to do research, to compare one scripture with another. And so our, what I'm talking to you about right here is the scriptures. Why? Because when you, when you put application to the revelation of the word, it brings a transformation of habits, of character, and of life. And so when you are experiencing uh, a transformation of habits, character, and life, and you're becoming like Jesus, that's the manifestation of the presence, the power, and the glory of God in your life. And so what I want to say to you is this. Your revelation is the foundation of your relationship with the Lord Jesus, and it is the key to your communion with the Holy Spirit. Again, let me say to you, the last chapter of 2 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 13, verse 14, the Apostle Paul says, now may you know the love of God. Now may you know the grace of the Lord Jesus. And now may you know the friendship, the companionship, the fellowship, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. And the way you know the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the communion of the Spirit is by revelation. It produces the manifestation of God the fruit of the Spirit, and communion with God through Jesus the Messiah.